I'm not going to give you any big toothy smiles today because I've had some dental work in the last few days and uh, there's no teeth to give you a big toothy smile with. I'm, I'm not equipped with my dentures at the moment. The news of yesterday, uh, if you're tuning in uh, on our timeline, is of the shooting in Buffalo. Ten people killed, three injured, one young white supremacist, racist, young man of 18 taken into custody, screaming his murderous spree, uh, having made his racist intentions known. It's an unambiguous kind of thing. Of course, uh, I believe in trials and uh, the concept of our jurisprudence system, but this is not jurisprudence. This is simply a commentary on life as we know it today in a world that reflects uh, sin. Sin has many different definitions and it's defined differently in different contexts in the scripture. But it is a missing of the mark. It's missing the point. It's missing the goal. It's missing the big idea. It is defined by what it misses, where it doesn't hit. And it doesn't hit truth. And the great truth of Scripture is God's love. At the center of all things, of all truth, is God. And God is love. And that's unambiguous. The deal is that we don't know that much about God. God is quoted in Isaiah as saying, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, my thoughts than your thoughts. And so we are in many ways ignorant of God. In many ways, everyone is an agnostic. In other words, um, don't know about God. And yet we can know God. Jesus is the human face of God. What we know about God is what God chooses to reveal about himself. And when I say himself, and I use the male pronoun, I realized that I could use any pronoun because God is not subject to gender. Gender is something God created. Um, when we're told in Genesis that God created us in his image, it says male and female created he them. But it's not, even that's not about gender, it's about being whole. Uh, it's about all things coming together in one whole. But I would prefer not to call God it at the moment. And I don't want to appear to be just uh, trying to be disingenuous by calling God her. And so I'm just going to pick one. You pick one. But God's uh, referred to in the scripture as he. So I'm just going to go with that for now. So when God reveals himself to us, it is as father and mother, and all those qualities are, are there, but primarily as being deeply concerned with humanity, with mortals, desiring to be known, desiring to relate, even the idea of desiring to be worshipped is just not to feed God's ego, but to have us acknowledge our place and our smallness in the face of all the greatness. What comes across, and especially as Jesus seeks to boil down the law and the Torah into uh, its deepest simplicity, which is not out of accord with the rabbinic tradition of his day, uh, is love God 
and love your neighbor. What we see in the supremacy movements, what we see in racism, what we see in meism, what we see in massive out of control consumerism is not love of God. It is not love of humanity. In the lectionary scriptures for May the 15th, 2022, it begins with Psalm 148, a massive praise of God throughout all creation, universal praise. Even the animals are praising God. And then we see God's heart in reaching out to Peter in the book of Acts, post-resurrection, post-ascension, post-Pentecost, Peter is still practicing his Judaism as I suspect he did till the end of his life. He didn't stop being an observant Jew, but God speaks to him about reaching out to the next group to a group of Gentiles who are coming to believe. He prepares them to receive the good news of the kingdom of God, reminding Peter of what the Jews had already come to know and what Isaiah said, that God is the God of all creation and of all people and all people shall come to the holy hill. Uh, to worship God. There's a universality about it. There are no barriers. While we have our human distinctions and our cultural practices and our identities that have come to us historically, they're not intrinsic to creation. And that God has this deep concern for all people of all time and of every nation and of every, if you will, race, even though race has really evolved into a construct that is not biological. And then we jump ahead to the end of time, or is it the beginning of time in Revelation 21, the beginning of timelessness, uh, as if, as if, Eternity could have a beginning and an end. In fact, God speaks in that passage in Revelation 21, said, I am the Alpha and the Omega. All time is present in me at all time, all at once. And to show you that, I'm even removing the sea between heaven and earth and the new heaven and the new earth and the new Jerusalem. And that's where I intend to live among people, among mortals, among humanity. So the heart of God is beating with a desire to relate to human beings made in God's image without classification, without anyone being supreme over anyone else. And then we go back to the words of Jesus as he comes to the end of his physical journey and he's in John 13 and he's saying, now is the son of man glorified. And he's looking at his cross and he's looking at his resurrection and ascension and the coming of his spirit. this culmination of his earthly journey where God has come to live among men and show us his face of love. And he says, I give you a new commandment, love one another as I have loved you. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, that you have love for one another. And this one another could seem exclusive, but the the circle is expanding. 
And God intends for the circle to include all who will receive divine love and grace and mercy. I see no other way in or out into uh, the future we need out of this present crisis than to radically exemplify radical love in how we deal with people person to person as groups in society. It radicalizes us. It is the root message of Jesus. It is missing. It is something that we have scarcely skimmed the surface of, but it is our only lifestyle hope. When Jesus says, follow me, he means follow me into a life of love and loving. This is where grace and righteousness and holiness and mercy and peace and justice meet at the foot of a loving savior on a cross. The Lord of love has called us to follow. And our legitimate answer is, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. May God bless you richly. Have a wonderful day.